I would thank um, Canada uh, for this, uh, to give me this opportunity to lecture about uh, some recently described fetal CNS pathologies. And I will go from clinical imaging to uh, genetics. The first case is this patient's refer from uh, abnormal midline and uh, slightly short corpus callosum. On this axial and coronal view, uh, you can appreciate the distortion of the anterior part of the intermic fissure and uh, asymmetric dysmorphic frontal horns, as well as abnormal asymmetric protoculation of the ciliary fissure. On the infrastructural structure, there is a subtle finding, which is the, this asymmetric brainstem, which is more identified on this zoom. This feature was confirmed on the fetal MR here, and confirmed also in the postnatal uh, MR images. This is the sagittal view where you can appreciate this uh, slightly short corpus callosum. And on this axial view, you see these distortions of the anthermic fissure, as well as the asymmetry of the uh, sylvian fissure. And a finding which is only seen on the post imaging is the lack of identification of the anterior part of the internal capsule. This combination of findings were highly suggestive of a mild form of pneumopathies, which was confirmed on exome sequencing. But what are tubulins? Tubulins are non covalent heterodimers composed of one alpha and one beta tubulin monomer, which serve as building blocks of microtubules involved in normal brain and radiogenesis through their roles in mitosis, intracellular transport, cell migrations, and neural morphology. Studies show that variants of tubulins affected tubulins heterodimerizations process or impair microtubule stabilities and lead to disruptions of neural divisions and migrations. And it leads to brain malformations with mild and severe form. We just show a case of mild form of pulmonopathies, which is complex cell malformations uh, involving infratentorial and supratentorial structures, as well as the midline. As illustrated, uh, very uh, specific features, which is asymmetry degenesis of the brainstem, which is in fact more suggestive of a classic event but is here in contour in the sonoric entities. The asymmetry can be on the cerebral hemisphere with one unilateral enlargement hemisphere with foliar dysplasia. Midline, as in our case, there was a, a short corpus callosum, but it's, it's not a specific findings, this corpus callosum degenesis. The distortions of the anterior part of the intermediate fissure is most specific and led to asymmetry of both ventricular system and gyration and should not be misinterpreted as cortical dysplasia. Indeed, cortical dysplasia are frequently encountered, but is not constant, and it can go from polymicular gyria to simplified gyral cortex. But the most specific features, which is only diagnosed on the postnatal imaging, is this fusion between lenticular nuclei and head of the codex nuclei with subsequent non-identifications of the outer limb of the interior capsule. We just published a paper about these two different postnatal imaging patterns of tubulinopathies. We just show a mild form and let's show a severe form. This patient was referred at 23 weeks of gestation, and you can appreciate that there was two mass protruding in the ventricular system, which are voluminous germinal matrix. You can see that there is a very thin parenchyma, 
and the hydraulic cortex. This is well uh, seen on this coronal view. And if you look at the mid sagittal and look at the infra structure, there is a degenesis of the vermis, uh, hypoplasia of the vermis, and a very thin and pink brainstem. And this pattern is really a pattern with a suggestive of tulumpathies. If we go back to this paper uh, in 2014 uh, about uh, the uh, tubulins and uh, microcephaly of tubulins, uh, in all cases, there is bolus terminal zone and ganglionic eminence, which is a very uh, specific uh, findings when you encounter micro micro lysencephaly. This is illustrated uh, in this uh, image where you see the huge terminal matrix zone and here the huge ma uh, matrix and thin parenchyma, which is exactly what we were, have saw in our case. So uh, there is different form of cortical dysplasia associated with tubular endopathies going from uh, agyra, polynchrogyra, microcephaly with simplified gyral pattern, and microlysencephaly. There is a paper, a very interesting paper, of uh, the team of Bolthauser about cases of ventricular megaly and brainstem kinking. In such case, the author says that we should think about uh, Walker-Warburg syndromes, X-link hydrocephalus due to mutation in NLCAM and tubulinopathies. In this case, there was a huge terminal matrix zone, thin parenchyma, agile cortex, and this would suggest a tubulin. But this possibility was great, but was not confirmed medically. We encounter a case in O15, which was similar to the case of uh, Bulthauser. This is the third case of our lecture. This patient with refer uh, for severe ventricular megaly at 27 weeks of gestation in the context of consanguinity with a normal cephalic biometry. If you look here, the cilian fissure is widely open for patients at 27 weeks of gestation. There is also some huge basses protruding in the ventricular system, suggestive of very uh, voluminous germinal matrix, and there is hypoplasia of the cerebellum. And there were also uh, very small eyes on both sides. On MR, the, con the, the findings were confirmed. You can appreciate uh, the general matrix here, and you see that there is a very uh, abnormal cilian fissure compared to a control at 27 weeks of gestation. So, major thinning of the cortical ribbon, pseudo lysencephalic aspect, external medicine in cerebral parenchyma, and bonus germinal matrix. If you go to the super infracentral structure, there is vermian degenesis and a very specific brainstem degenesis with a mild dead shaped appearance, but a very specific elongations of the pulse here, which is seen also here. When I saw this case in 015, it reminds me of a case in 03, and we have encountered another case. And if you compare, this one and this one is the same case, but it's two different family with the same here, uh, brainstem degenesis with these elongated bones. This case was associated with club feet and clenched hands, and also left off hypoplasia related to mitral and aortic atresia with dysmorphism 
with uh, hypo, uh, hyperthyroidism. In that case, the parents opted for continuation of pregnancy, and there was a neonatal death at the G4, and no neuropathologic examination was performed according to what the parents wanted. For this family, there was a recurrence in O5, and in that case, there was termination at 23. And on the pathologic specimen, specimen, you can see that there is very huge gemmal matrix zone here with a, a almost hydraulic cortex. These findings were associated with club foot and atrogy preposis. If you go back to the case of O15, uh, here you see at birth very small eyes, some uh, teeth in the German matrix, and this very specific brainstem degenesis with these elongated bones. This case was associated with club hand and feet, microphthalmia and hypotonia. So these cases, as well as the case of Bolthauser, could suggest a severe forms of tubinopathies based on the lysencephalic aspects and the voluminous German matrix. But recurrence are rare in tubulinopathies, and they are most often sporadic, and there is no extracephalic malformation in tubulinopathies. And in our three cases, there is associated extraencephalic malformation. Moreover, these were tested, and there was no tubulinopathies on genetic testing. So we did the exome sequencing of these three cases, and this gave uh, the fact that we found a variance in the gene. IAIA1109, and this uh, genes uh, and this data were shared on GenMature. In fact, uh, we did a collaboration with Professor Alexandre Raymond of Lausanne, and he had uh, two uh, 10 families uh, with uh, six of them where there was consanguinity, and all these families are have cerebral malformations with contracture and atrogeposis, with cardiac malformation, renal anomalies, ocular, ophthalocell, and iguana. So we published this article on this uh, IAA1109 variants, and uh, it's a uh, uh, condition in which you can have variable phenotype going from mild to lethal form, as the case that we show. And as soon as, uh, as in this case, the family from uh, Singapore, and you have exactly the same kind of uh, image with uh, very uh, elongated bones here. This is a case from United States with the same bones with a uh, very huge German matrix with uh, some cysts within it. So when you have a severe tubin-like cerebral malformations with uh, some associated anomalies, uh, such as club fit, arthropic reposis, ophthalmosis anomalies, and visceral anomalies, you should think about these new entities uh, related to car IAA1109, uh, which can be a great mimicker of uh, tumorpathies. So if we go back to the case of Bulthauser, when you uh, see this kind of huge germinal matrix with these elongated bones, for sure, it's very suggestive of uh, uh, our variant. So to conclude, to conclude about uh, this recently described CNS pathologies, and I show you distortions of the anterior tissue with this asymmetric brainstem. 
which was uh, very suggestive of mild form of tumulopathies. This is uh, the case where you have the voluminous germinal matrix and microzenencephaly with this Z-shaped brainstem, very thin, which is the severe form of tuberculosis. In that case, there is no extrinsic anomalies. If you look at these two, they are very similar with a, a very huge thermal matrix zone, but on the brainstem, there is a slightly thin brainstem, but the uh, brainstem uh, dysmorphism is completely different to this one. And in that case, when there is extrinsic anomalies, you should think about Chi AA1109 variants. So if you want to have more details about uh, this uh, new uh, fetal uh, imaging pattern, uh, you can uh, have a look at these two papers about tubular novatures and uh, uh, Chi AA1109 variants. And thank you for your attention.